to today's Rupture Duck podcast, looking at disability and accessibility in the arts. I'm Sophie Weaver, and today I'm going to be talking to the Baked Bean Company. No, it's not what you think, it's not a foodstuff. Um, this is a company that is introducing people to the arts with, that have learning difficulties. Now, this Baked Bean Company was founded by Jade and Nico Hardrada Gross in 1997 specifically for the purposes of getting people with learning disabilities involved in the arts. It started out as just a short-term summer project, a, a summer holiday project, and um, it was so popular that they're still carrying on today, which is really fantastic. Now they hold up to five classes a day, I believe, in four locations throughout Wandsworth in London and the surrounding boroughs. So today I've got with me um, members of the Baked Bean Company. Um, we have Leader James, and we also have a couple of members, Irene and Wayne. So welcome, James, Irene and Wayne. It's Hi, hello. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. Yeah, it's great to have you on. Um, so James, tell us a bit more about the company. It would be great to hear more about um, how it all started. Uh, how did you start it up and what was the inspiration behind setting this up? Well, it, it started uh, out as a need, a uh, specific need for, um, for some kind of arts-based activities with uh, people with learning disabilities in Wandsworth. Uh, there was a day centre at the time, which uh, ran out of Wandsworth, that um, Jade and Nico were, were, were working in there and they, they both had arts-based backgrounds, music and um, drama and theatre, and they um, put on a, um, a, a short six-week summer project and they were given a group of um, students, as uh, we call them, um, who had no experience in drama, had a range of uh, different needs, um, and during that process, they found that drama really opened up um, that yeah. these people's experiences and um, development, um, and they also absolutely loved it. So as soon as that project finished, um, they were clamouring for more. So very soon, the project moved out of the day centre into a local community uh, centre, and um, the, the rest is history. People just started coming, more and more people. Um, so the Baked Bean Theatre Company um, got a sister company called uh, Baked Bean Theatre Company 2, um, and then um, various other projects happened, just dance projects, DJ projects. We now run a range of holidays, about 10 a year usually, um, and uh, social opportunities. And it's just really grown over, over the years. That is, that is fantastic, a real success story by the sounds of it. Um, so tell us a bit more about some of the activities that you do. Um, it's not obviously just acting. Um, I think you mentioned there's music, dance, um, all sorts of things. Would you like to tell me a bit more about that, James? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so we've got um, a range of different theatre companies and they work um, in, in different ways. So we've got performance based companies. Uh, we've got companies for people who really want to develop things as concentration, communication skills, develop their confidence. We've got um, a company called Beans in Education, and they, um, they uh, work very closely with the NHS, local universities such as Kingston University, we work with Solomon's University, um, and we, we produce and write um, training workshops um, with lots of small plays. Um, written um, specifically to train the students. And that's usually to um, help the students learn about how to communicate with someone with learning disabilities, uh, try to be aware of what um, areas not to um, kind of fall into, what traps, um, for example, um, not to patronise our students or to use, um, you know, a language that's quite babyish or childish. Um, and we do all of this in humour. Um, where. You know, the, so, our, so the people that we train usually have a, a, a very fun time. There's lots of laughter, but we try and get our message across. That, that sounds absolutely brilliant. I love the idea that you're using drama and theatre to be able to raise awareness. You know, that, that's re really great. And as you say, a lot of people um, perhaps are a bit nervous about how you should be around somebody with a disability and, and in particular a learning disability. So I think that's a really good way of, of 
um, opening up awareness and try, you know, doing that training is fantastic. Um, I'd like to now come to um, Wayne and Irene, um, uh, the members that have joined us today. Um, would you like to tell me what your favourite activities are in the company that you do? My favourite activity is DJing because I love playing old music from the 80s and 90s and 70s. And really? I, really, I really love Ovi, he's a legend. And he and I really and I I'm his, and my best friends, Ovi and I. Ovi is my best drama teacher. Excellent. So um, you're getting up there doing the DJing. Yes. That, that is brilliant. And and Wayne, what is it for you that you like most? I'm at the moment I'm in the Debate Beat Dance Company and I do Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I used to do DJing and I used to do acting a long time ago, and um, with, with with the amazing James, of course, and um, and yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, and um, it's it's I just love coming to Bait Bean. I love seeing my friends and hanging around with them, and I just I love it. It's just a lot of fun. Brilliant. It really does sound great fun. Um, yeah. James, back to you. Um, when you first set up the company, the theatre company, um, what were the initial challenges for you in setting it up? And have those challenges changed over time at all? OK, so just to let you know that it was Jane and Nick that were there in the, in the early days. I joined them quite soon afterwards. Um, the initial challenges really was when you set up something that's different that people haven't done before, they don't really see, maybe see the significance of it. They might not see the advantages of it. We often still get comments that, that we just run a drama project, but it's so much more than that because it develops all the skills that are so vital for people with learning disabilities. And drama is just one of the tools that we use really. Um, you know, we, we've seen people who were elected youths that have joined us that um, now um, are, um, are verbal. And, um, we've seen people really growing their own confidence because it's more of a holistic approach as well. It's not just that we're trying to put on a play with people. We're addressing issues that affect their lives. Um, and certainly in the, all the work we do, all the work we create comes from the actors, comes from our students. They, they are the ones that provide the ideas, the thoughts, the imaginations, the feelings. And um, they're the things that end up um, in our scenes. So it's it's what the main message I'd like to get across. Is it's so much more than just a theatre project. Yeah, yeah, and I think from what um, Irene was just saying about DJing, you know, it, it really is. And Wayne doing the dance classes, it, it is so much more than just the acting and the theatre. Um, so have there been any surprises along the way? <laughs> There's a surprise every single day. Um, <laughs> the one thing I always say about my job is that no day is the same. Every day has got a range of challenges um, from, you know, some, some quite serious issues, you know, when, um, that maybe um, we have to help people who are having a very difficult time at home or really want to change their life and feel that, um, unable to do so, to the first time someone goes on stage and gets a round of applause and gets positive affirmation and celebrated for something that they've achieved. And a parent or a family member may come up and say, I had no idea they could do that. I had no idea they were capable of that. And we get that an awful lot. We also do lots of holidays. And um, I run, um, we work closely with ones with a uh, youth service and we, we take a lot of young people with learning disabilities away. And very often, the first time we take them away, we have parents saying, oh, they can't do this, or they can't do that, or they can't do any clinic, or they can't do this. And when they come back after five days, they're, they're telling their parents all the things they've done. They can't believe it. Um, and I, I think it's because we aim very high all the time, and we are there right behind them to help them succeed. We, 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 we want people to succeed, but we have high expectations, and all, and nearly all the time, they um, they meet those expectations. Yeah, it's, it's totally that affirmation of people's abilities, isn't it? You know, to themselves, confirming to themselves what they can do yeah. and confirming to the people around them what they're able to do. 
and that is just so important. Um, coming back, um, Wayne um, and Irene, um, let's start with you, Wayne. Um, what would you say is your favourite memory of being part of Baked Bean Company? Um, I remember the first time I joined. It was in 2009. Some and I remember, yeah, and I remember doing a play called The Eclipse. And it was all about these people living in a suburban street and hiding dark secrets. And I was the lollipop man, really. And, um, and I just felt privileged and honoured to be in a to be in the theatre with my friends and performing. And it was the best piece of theatre I've ever done. That is so lovely. Just, uh, just, just to add on to that, um, because we always work with people's talents and skills, and, um, and Wayne has got an incredible memory, haven't you, Wayne? I do. In yeah. fact, um, he has memorised he's memorised every single bus route in London. If you gave him a bus route number, <laughs> he would be able to tell you where it started from and where it finished. I kid you not. Um, so for that play, Wayne had a series of monologues, soliloquies that he performed, um, which really helped bind that play together. So he was he was like a narrator, really, which was it was a it was amazing, yeah, amazing it's true. It's true. Wayne. Absolutely true. Yeah, and I was very proud of what I've achieved. So oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, that's brilliant. And Irene, what about you? What is your favourite memory so far with the with the company? My favourite memory with you guys was being able to go on a big holiday to America on the wow. Atlantic Ocean. Excellent. Yeah. So you went on holiday to America. Yeah. Wow. How yeah. we could spend a whole half hour on that, I'm sure. That must have been a brilliant experience. Oh, really? And we got the plane from Gatwick Airport all the way through to America, and it was the best holiday I've ever been on. And mm -hmm. do you want to know why? Because I overcome my fear of going on sit up upside down rides, and the motto of James is sit up straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we call those we call those rather scary roller coasters the sit up straight roller coasters. And I we went on every single one, which is amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> I, was I was petrified. I was petrified that um, please don't put me in the front seat. Put me in the middle seat or the back seat. Make sure I'm sitting right, right, right in between two people or sitting up to somebody, but not in the front seat. There we go. That's incredible. Um, well, yes, I, I, I did you're... sit in the front seat with James on that Monday on that big red one, and it was, I was petrified. I'm sure you were, yeah. But hey, it was worth it, I'm sure. <laughs> um, well, anyway, apart from your favourite memories, what is the best thing for you about being part of the company? The best thing for me is being on a big road up stage at the Parton Arts Cinema and doing DJing on the Tuesday. So performing on the stage is important. Yes, it I mean. is, yes. Yeah. Were either of you in um, the production that we did with Hugh Grant? Yes, I was in that. Do you want to talk a little bit about that one? Yes. Um, so, Sophie, um, six years ago, we uh, we went to Sadler's Wells Theatre in North London and we did a show called Romeo and Juliet. I don't know if you um, heard of the play, like, um, Shakespeare play. Yeah. And it was, yeah. And it was based on... So, me and members of the Bay Bean, we went to Sadler's Wells and we put on a show called Romeo and Juliet. Julia, I played Tybalt, who was one of the um, one of the characters, and a special and a special person came and performed with us. His name was Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant, oh, I love Hugh Grant. You are so lucky. What yeah. was that like being with Hugh Grant? It was absolutely, in my opinion, the best day ever. I mean, I didn't even expect to perform with. Hugh. Huge one. I didn't. So, I would be a job that, you know, I would forget all my lines, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> one, one of the things that I'm very keen on is representation in the arts as well. And um, we have we have worked quite closely with 
film companies over the past and TV companies. Most recently, we were uh, involved in The Crown, um, the Netflix programme. Uh, we were we were a supported artist, supporting artists in that. We've also been in um, Les Miserables, the film, um, Burke and Hare, um, and a number of other feature films. And um, you know, the more we can we can get out there and work with the industry, um, because we always hear really positive things from directors, from um, other people in the film and TV industry. Um, we want we want to get out there and perform as much as we can, don't yeah, we? And yeah, meet we people do. and change people's perceptions. Yeah, That's yeah, what we're yeah. all about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's a credit to you all that you're getting that um, affirmation and. Um, accreditation from people like Hugh Grant and being at Sadler's Wells you know that is an, a, an amazing achievement for all of you um you know I'm I'm quite gobsmacked it's it's amazing um I have to um ask the question you know over the last year obviously we've we've had Covid it's impacted on everything you know it's affected people's lives in many ways um so what difference has that made to you uh, and the company? Um, so how has that impacted what you do? And moving on from that as well, how do you see yourselves moving forward? And that's probably more for you, James. Yeah, well, look, this year has been difficult for everybody. Um, yeah. but, and, it's, and, and that's not like, you know, it's still going on. The stuff that's happening in India at the moment is just heartbreaking. However, we um, are now back. We have... Um, We've worked, our team's worked tirelessly to make sure it's a COVID safe environment. We kept um, a skeleton um, service going throughout the whole thing because some of our clients just cannot cope at home or could not cope at home. Um, mm. The isolation was too much. So we were able to continue to do that as much as possible. We also now um, are more or less aiming towards full capacity again. And um, we look, I've seen a huge effect it's had on many of our clients. Um, isolation, uh, we've been able to run Zoom classes and things like that, but it's not the same as face-to-face. -face. No. Um, and but our, but our clients are brilliant, they're sturdy, they're, they're, they're made of strong stuff and they can't wait to get back into the classrooms. And um, we, are, we are hoping that within six months, COVID is a word that we don't even have to contemplate anymore, really, because it's we haven't seen you know anything nice about this whole thing except the wonderful stuff that's been created over Zoom. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So really, you know, you wouldn't have survived. Well, not that you wouldn't have survived, but you couldn't have continued in the way without Zoom through lockdown. That that has been a, a great help in keeping in contact with each other. Oh, yeah, but also I want to say that our tutors here at Baked Beans, they were doing home visits um, regularly every other week. They were, they were calling on um, our clients on the phone um, every week um, because sometimes it's just not enough. And um, we also needed to make sure that some of the people who were really struggling, who, were, who maybe didn't have the support at home, were getting our support as well. It was really important to us. That, that's incredible commitment and well done for all of that through, through the lockdown. And so moving forward, are you feeling quite positive about moving forward and, and getting back into things? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So what have you got um, in the pipeline? Or is there anything you're particularly working on at the moment? Um, or what, what's your next thing? Um, well, we've got lots of ideas in the pipeline. Um, I don't, I can't, I can't give too much away, but we've got a project that we're thinking about, which, um, which um, is called Arms um, Across the Nation at the moment, which is where we're going to try and work with a theatre project up in the Manchester area um, to talk about how this year has been and how we're going to get over it and how we're going to move on. And this partnership project will involve some people from our theatre company, some people from their theatre company. We're also trying to, um, we want to work on some educational um, films and videos about um, the Care Act and things like that, because we think that's really important as well. Um, yeah. So that uh, we want to make sure that people know their rights and that they can, um, you know, really get out there. But really, like I say, all our best ideas come from our students. So I can't wait to see what they're going to bring back to the table now we're open. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's going to be a really fun time ahead. Um, Wayne and Irene, um, 
what would you say to other people about joining the baked bean company? How would you, would you recommend it to them and well, why? What would you recommend? Yeah, I would recommend them joining to them because um, it's, it's fun, it's enjoyable, you get a chance to work on the stage and you get to go on all these magnificent holidays. <laughs> yeah, I, I, totally, <laughs> I totally agree with them. I mean, just in my opinion, just never give up hope. Just keep on, keep on believing in yourself. If if you've got a learning disability, it's not going to stop you from trying out something that you that you really like. So obviously, I'll say keep on believing. In, enjoy it. You'll get to meet the staff, the members, everybody. So it's a fun place to be. Wayne and Irene, thank you for those comments that is really that's a really great note to possibly finish on I think uh, we're coming to the end now so um, you know that I think that's a really important message for everyone about believing in yourself and no matter what your disability is as you were saying Wayne yes, yes. you believe in yourself and you can achieve things that's and not... you can show other people what you can achieve and I think you're all doing that in a really brilliant way um, it's a great company, clearly, and um, I, I think uh, what we've got is a clip to show um, that you've got out there um, in social media, James. Um, it's out there on YouTube, so people will be able to watch this and see, and it, there's links to the website, I believe, so people that are interested can go and have a look, can't they? At, um, well, we'll finish with that clip in a moment but before that I would just like to say thank you very much to you all thank you James thank you Wayne thank you Irene it's, it's been a real pleasure to meet you guys thank you thank you very much indeed it's been our pleasure it's been a pleasure and um yeah thank you good luck with everything you're doing you're and doing great stuff future, and um I'm sure we'll see lots more of you in the future Yes, um, yes, definitely. Social media and everywhere. So right. I will say goodbye for now, and um, oh. I'll leave with this clip of the Baked Bean Theatre Company. Thank you very much. No one's ready for COVID-19, but the learning disabilities community was hit hard. We have seen it all, but luckily we had a really clear instructions about what to do. We said that you should work from home if you can and only go to work if you must. We now need to stress that anyone who can't work from home should be actively encouraged to go to work. So, work from home if you can, but you should go to work if you can't work from home. So, we are saying don't go to work, go to work. Don't take public transport, go to work, don't go to work. Stay indoors. If you can work from home, go to work. Don't go to work. Go outside, don't go outside. And, uh, and then we will or won't. Uh, something or other. <laughs> Face mask is a must have item. And we think this is great. Not so great when you rely on official expression to communicate. Great shot, Daniel. But could you try and smile? Be more inviting. We don't want to scare them off. Here in the UK, we really upped and had rushing game. We are well rehearsed for upcoming birthdays. All jobs aside, people with learning disabilities have been challenged. By the current climate, but we are going to show you how. Sit back, relax, but stay alert.